I'm actually a little bit freaked out right now, guys. I sat down to write out some ideas for this video, just like I always do, and I was feeling nostalgic because I had mentioned Marie Kondo's book, and I was like, I'm gonna go look and see exactly when I bought that book, and guess what? I purchased the life-changing magic of tidying up exactly five years ago today. Can you believe that? That is so crazy. This week, when you see this video, marks the five year anniversary of the start of my five year decluttering and minimalism journey. I remember the first time I read her book, she made some pretty bold claims in there. Marie Kondo claimed that a dramatic decluttering and reorganization might not just transform your home, but also your life. I remember reading that book and thinking, yeah, right lady, you don't know me. I have decades of clutter left behind by my parents and lost loved ones. I have emotional baggage that you can't even imagine. Until that point, I had just always assumed that I was going to be carrying these things around with me for the rest of my life. But I never stopped and asked myself the question, do these things actually make me happy? So I was willing to give it a shot and if you've been following me for a while, you know what happens next. It took me five years, but I was able to get through all of that emotional clutter, decluttered our entire home down to eight suitcases, we moved to Europe, to Germany, to reunite with my husband's family. We bought a beautiful house here with enough space to hold all 20 plus of us when we can finally get together again. And I'll be darned if I didn't discover my life's purpose, which is to share the joy of decluttering and minimalism with other people on my blog and YouTube channel. By the way, hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Marissa and I am a former emotional hoarder turned minimalist mom and today I want to share with you 10 incredible benefits, not only that I have noticed in my own life, but also I did a ton of research and I found studies and articles and other statistics that back up the claims that I'm going to make. So if you hear me rattling off any data or statistics, I'm gonna be sharing a blog post which I will link down in the comments section below with all of the links to all of that data and statistics. So hit that like button and drop a door emoji down in the comments section below if you are on your own decluttering or minimalism journey. And remember, get rid of clutter and you may just find it was blocking the door you were looking for. Make sure you stick around until the end of this video because every single benefit that I'm going to be sharing is packed with meaning and they just get better and better and better as we go. Minimalism benefit number one is you just clean less. And I've mentioned this many, many times before in my videos. It is so true. Now that our home is less cluttered, it's just so much easier to tidy up. What used to take me hours to do before could only take me maybe 10 or 15 minutes now to just walk through the home and grab things to put them back in their place. I no longer feel like I'm swimming through toy clutter and even my kids can easily chip in with the cleaning and the tidying because there's honestly so much less to do. Considering that the average working mom spends over 21 hours per week doing housework, that means that you can get a lot of time back to yourself. Minimalism benefit number two is you lose stuff less often. So before I became a minimalist, I was always looking for something. It felt like a book or a toy for my kids or a measuring cup something. And it turns out that I am not alone. Research shows that the average American wastes 55 minutes per day looking for stuff that they own but they can't find. And $2.7 billion each year is spent on replacing things that you have lost. One trick that minimalists use to reduce visual clutter in their home is to give each and every single item in your home its own place. And what that means is when each and every single item has its own home, it will more easily return to that place as if it's being pulled by a magnet. And the beautiful thing about this is not only do you know where it goes, but also your husband and your kids will know where it goes, which means they can help with the cleaning and the tidying up too. Minimalism benefit number three is that minimalism can also be good for your health and your waistline. And I've 
heard a lot of minimalist women mention this in their videos that when they discovered minimalism and they started decluttering one of the benefits was that they had lost weight and it's not just weight loss it's also things like sleep studies have actually shown that people who have cluttered homes have a harder time sleeping and are more likely to suffer from insomnia and clutter is also associated with increased weight a 2008 study found that people who live in cluttered environments are 77 percent more likely to be overweight or obese. In one research study, female graduate students who were in a cluttered kitchen versus a neat kitchen actually consumed 103 calories more just being in the cluttered environment. Minimalism is also good for kids. I always say that massively decluttering our toys was one of the best things I could have ever done for our family. My kids had so many toys and yet they were only playing with the same toys over and over again. I would watch them go and pick up a box of toys and then just dump it out on the floor and then not play with a single toy, grab the next box, wash, rinse, and repeat over and over again until the floor was completely covered with toys. Not a single one had been played with and I had to pick it all up and then we would start all over again. So look what I found inside this toy truck. Oh, lovely, some uneaten carrots and a quesadilla. I wonder how long that's been there. In one study, they took a group of children and they put them in a room with fewer toys and more toys. And the kids that were put in the room with fewer toys played longer, more creatively, and were more focused than the children with more toys. Isn't that interesting? And it's actually a little bit scary how many toys our kids have. In the US, children only make up 3.7% of the world's population of children, but they account for 47% of all the toys and children's books on the entire planet. That is a crazy statistic. Not only that, but a study actually found that there is a strong link between low self-esteem and materialism beginning in early childhood. I have to say that personally as a mom, I feel that I have noticed uh, improved focus and better behavior, overall more happiness and more creativity after decluttering our toys. My kids are now fluent in German and English. We got so many compliments on how quickly they learned when we moved here. The next minimalism benefit is a happier marriage. Our marriage has definitely improved since we decluttered our home. There's just a sense of peace and relaxation that wasn't there previously. In our case, I have to admit it was mostly my fault because I was the one with 30 years of clutter. I was the one who was an emotional hoarder. I was the one who had trouble letting go of all of this stuff. And my husband was already pretty minimal before we even met, although he has his things, which maybe you'll find out about in future videos. But all the things that I had weren't actually making me happy. They were just stressing me out. And it turns out that that's really common. Did you know that research shows that women are actually more stressed out by clutter than men? A 2010 study of married couples with at least one school aged child found the wives in the study who perceived themselves as having a cluttered home or a home that needed work tended to have increased levels of cortisol throughout the day. Those who weren't feeling cluttered, who included most of the men in that study, had cortisol levels that tended to drop throughout the day. Now, isn't that interesting that even in the same home, the same family, the wives and the husbands had completely different reactions to the perceived level of clutter throughout the home. Most of the men weren't bothered by the clutter. And do you have any idea what increased cortisol is linked to? Everything from anxiety and depression to weight gain, insomnia, and even memory impairment. My husband and I were already practicing frugal living before we started our minimalism journey, so we really appreciated the additional financial benefits that minimalism brought with it. By the time we decluttered our entire home and sold everything, including two cars, please remember, we had made $50,000. We spend less money overall because we buy fewer things, but also we're more creative with the way that we spend our money. For example, when we had to chop a piece of our kitchen 
tension off so that it would fit into the space, my husband got really creative and he turned the top cabinet into storage for his office. And then we used the bottom cabinet as a dresser for our boys room. Not only did we save money because we didn't have to buy two additional furniture pieces brand new, but we also repurposed a perfectly good thing that would have otherwise ended up in a landfill or in a storage unit. And speaking of storage, another financial benefit of minimalism is you don't need storage space for all your extra stuff. Americans will fork over 37.5 billion per year on storage at an average cost of $90 per month. The most common unit rented measures 10 feet by 10 feet, which is enough to store two to four rooms worth of furniture. Think of all the money that could be saved if people didn't have that extra storage rented to store all their extra stuff. And now is honestly a really great time to sell your clutter because sustainable shopping and reselling is hotter than ever. In fact, the secondhand resale market is going to hit 64 billion within the next five years, and it's actually going to overtake the traditional thrift and donation segment by 2024. I have some great videos and blog posts that I will link down in the description box below for you if you want a little bit of help on knowing how to get started with selling your stuff online. The next minimalism benefit is that you reduce environmental waste. So if done properly, minimalism can actually be very eco-friendly. On one hand, you can reduce excessive shopping and overconsumption. And on the other, when you do choose to make purchases, you can choose more ethical or sustainable brands, higher quality that will last longer and create less waste. Even decluttering can be more eco-friendly. Whenever possible, I would encourage you to either sell your items online or give them away directly in a buy nothing group. Because unfortunately, donation centers like Goodwill and the Salvation Army are overflowing with donations donations and a lot of times those donations do end up in landfills. But you also have to remember that sometimes trash is just trash and the things that you have that you don't want can either deteriorate in your closet or they can deteriorate in a landfill. The best thing that we can do is to change our behaviors going forward to reduce environmental impact. Because if you look at the statistics about how much waste landfills get every year, Textile waste alone generates 11.3 million tons of waste in the US. And if we change our efforts going forward, we can bring that down. Minimalism benefit number eight is increased life satisfaction. And life satisfaction is one of those things that's really hard to put your finger on, but you know when you have it and when you don't. Life satisfaction means having a favorable attitude towards your life as well as your options for the future. But too many of us have gotten used to judging our life in terms of what we have or we don't have. Yet over and over, science has shown us that material possessions do do not give us happiness and satisfaction. In fact, more material possessions are negatively correlated with your happiness and satisfaction levels. One study found that procrastination and clutter problems led to a significant decrease in life satisfaction among older adults. Minimalism benefit number nine is better focus and productivity. So in his book, Goodbye Things, Fumio Sasaki mentioned this idea of a silent to-do list. The basic principle of the silent to-do list is that everything that you have in your home and in your life is sending out silent messages to you. It could be the basket of laundry in the corner that's saying fold me or the dirty dishes in the sink that are saying wash me. It's the trash that needs taken out. It's the empty refrigerator. It's the pile of unopened letters that are sitting on your desk. The bigger the silent to-do list is, the more overwhelming it becomes. And especially as a mom, I felt like I needed to be doing all the things, but not just doing them, nailing them like super mom, healthy homemade meals, well-behaved children, a body that bounces back six weeks after giving birth. Never mind that I was running on two or three hours of sleep in the beginning and sometimes couldn't even wash my hair for days at a time. Psychologists who study cognition have found that our brains are not designed for heavy duty multitasking and doing more than one complex task at once can take a toll on our productivity. There's a quote that I love by Francine Joy and it goes, my goal was no longer to get more done but to have less to do. Now that my life is 
is less cluttered. I have fewer things that are calling out for my attention all the time, which means much less mental stress. Bringing us to minimalism benefit 10, which is more fun time. A lot of people seem to think that minimalism is boring. Like we sit in a boring empty home with boring white walls and we eat boring food. In reality, I would say that our life now is more fun, colorful, and exciting than it ever was before. I'm not going to deny we have a lot of white walls, but we also have playful dragon curtains that celebrate my husband's Chinese culture in his office. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this because I know somebody's gonna ask me. The raccoon is trying to keep away the pigeons from my husband's balcony. If you have any pro tips on how to keep pigeons from pooping on your balcony and windowsill, drop me a comment down below because we need help, like seriously. My kids are still kids. They have a lot of energy. They love to play. They're really goofy. One of their favorite things to do right now is to have burping contests, which is We've learned to play chess, we go and explore the forest, we watch movies and we grill out. We do all the things that normal families do, we just have less stuff so we have more time to do those things. In conclusion, minimalism is awesome and you don't need to declutter your entire home down to eight suitcases to see the benefits of minimalism. Start small, see how it feels, and then if you want to go a little bit further, you can. What benefits of minimalism do you enjoy that I didn't share in today's video? Feel free to share your thoughts and stories down in the comments section below. I would love to read them. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel to join our minimalist family because I would love to see you around again soon. Like I said, I have a lot of great videos coming up, including the much awaited cameo from my husband. So make sure you have your notifications turned on because I don't want you to miss any of those awesome videos. All right, see you again soon. Take care, bye bye.